What's going on everybody? Evan here, and yes, you read the title correct. I have with me the iPhone 11. This phone was released in 2019 and was the first kind of remodel after the release of the iPhone 10. So in this video, I'm going to be telling you why you should consider buying the iPhone 11 in 2023. So let's get into it. First and foremost, is price. Off contract, a pre-owned copy of the iPhone 11 sells for a little over $400. On contract, you can get this phone most likely for a couple hundred dollars brand new. On Amazon, I found this pre-owned for a little over $300. Compared to Apple's cheapest phone that they sell on their website, which is the iPhone SE, that phone sells for $429. Yes, the SE has technically better specs, but it is going to feel like an older phone. With the more you use it, because of the home button, the single camera, the large bezels, the iPhone SE is 2022 internals, but in a 2018 shell, but that is for another video. This video is to show you why the iPhone 11 in its current form can still feel like a flagship phone to this day. The iPhone 11 comes with the same size as display as the current iPhone 14 at 6.1 inches. It is a liquid retina display rather than a super retina, but without being side by side, you won't be able to notice the difference. This was the second iPhone with the dual cameras, and the iPhone 11 consists of a 12 megapixel main camera and the 12 megapixel ultra wide. This was the first dual camera array with the ultra wide instead of the portrait lens, which is the two times zoom. Considering this phone was released four years ago, this phone comes with the A13 Bionic, which is currently only two generations behind the iPhone 14. This phone still has a six core CPU, a four core GPU, and the neural engine, which Apple uses for all of its Siri and on-device algorithms. And a big reason why this phone feels much more up to date than the SE is the included Face ID. Yes, some do prefer Touch ID, but until Apple includes under display Touch ID, I think Face ID will be the main unlock input that iPhones will have for the foreseeable future. As well, the iPhone 11 still includes Apple's water resistance of a depth of two meters for 30 minutes with a rating of IP68. The iPhone 11's display is just flat out great. With its liquid retina display, everything looks crisp and is very hard to tell the difference between this display and the iPhone 14s. Maybe only on text-heavy websites you will be able to see a few more lines at the bottom of the screen, but to the naked eye, it would be very hard to spot the differences even side by side. The one feature that you will not get is the ProMotion display, as found on the iPhone 13 and 14 Pro but you won't get that in the base 13 and 14 anyways, so that really doesn't play a factor here. The major difference is that if you are using this phone a lot outside, the 625 nits of max brightness may not be bright enough for you to see the display in full or direct sunlight. That is where the newer displays, which stand at a base 800 nits and up to 1200 nits when using HDR content, this is where you may see a big big difference, but it's up to you whether it's worth four to five times the price. And I'll keep going. New phones in the $250 to $400 range are going to cut corners, most likely in the build department. So cheap plastics and non-Gorilla Glass for the display will be used. But this being an Apple flagship, the build quality will be top notch and you don't have to worry about any corners being cut in the build quality. As well, being an Apple device, Case options are available to you from all over. Good luck trying to find a case for that $250 phone off Amazon that is going to protect your phone against drops. Been there, done that, lesson learned. Now the iPhone 11 does come with 64 gigabytes on the base model. And these days, that is not enough storage when you are taking photos, downloading apps, playing games, and so on. But for a $250 phone, that extra $50 to $100 for the double the storage doesn't seem too bad on the wallet. And now we're talking 128 gigs, and that you should be more than fine with. 
And even if you do decide to go with the 64 gigabyte model, there is plenty of utilities to remove unused apps and games, move pictures and videos from your device to the cloud when storage is tight. You can easily pick up 50 to 100 gigabyte cloud plans for like two to $5 a month. And this will allow you to offload pictures and videos that you don't need on your device. That way they are backed up to the cloud if anything was to happen to your phone. And now you want to ask, yes, but Evan, how long will I be able to use this phone if it's already been out for three years? Well, considering Apple just ended support for the iPhone 7 last year, I would say that the iPhone 11 has at least three plus years of support from Apple. With the 8, the 10, and the 10R models still between this device, I think that is a pretty good estimate. And that means you are going to be receiving updates to an already great phone every year. Something that Apple is known for and why I enjoy their devices because sometimes certain updates bring new life to an older device. So three years for $250 is pretty good in my books. Given then the $1,000 plus flagships, which is the 13 and 14, you'll probably be able to pick those up at the same price you bought at the 11 when you're done with this device. The iPhone 11 was the first dual camera array from Apple to include the ultra wide camera instead of the two times zoom lens. This made taking large photos a breeze being able to capture so much more without the needing to move back to include all of the details. As well, this was the first phone to include the wide front facing camera. And this makes taking the family selfie a breeze. My wife and I like to take a picture every weekend and we would all pile in front of either mine or my wife's camera, hit the zoom out button and take a few shots and hopefully we caught both kids looking at the camera. But this made taking these photos so much easier. Before the 11, when I was using my 10, I needed to fish out my selfie stick, push the camera far enough back to get everybody in the frame. Or even worse, if we were remote and I didn't have the selfie stick, I would have to rest it on a surface far, far away, turn the timer on, run over, get in the shot, look, see if everybody was in the shot, and redo everything if someone wasn't looking. And we haven't even talked about picture quality. The iPhone 11 was one of the first times where I could say that phones were starting to capture a good enough picture to keep the big cameras at home. If you were on the move and doing family activities, planning to bring a big camera isn't always the easiest thing. With having to pack everything from lenses, stands, adapters, chargers, batteries, make sure the batteries are charged, Bring the device that is already charged, has multiple lenses, and fits in the pocket is a parent's best choice. Battery on this device to this day is still great. Apple states that you will get 17 hours of video playback, 24 hours plus of audio playback, and great, great standby time. Apple really still holds the crown for iOS devices when not in use. But if you are picking up a used device, the battery will most likely have a few less cycles left on it. So if you are picking it up used, Apple can replace the battery for $69. So maybe a year or two down the line, the battery isn't lasting how you want it to. You can take it to them, have it replaced, and you're back to that 17 or 24 hours of battery in no time. Okay, but what features am I missing out on? Apple has added some really great features to the new devices in the last couple of years, and the iPhone 11 will not get these features. These features include cinematic mode, crash detection, and the recently released ability to use certain satellites to make phone calls in remote areas. Now, if any of these features seem appealing to you, then definitely look into the 13 or 14 that support these. As well, Apple's new smoothing feature during video recordings as well as Apple's new smoothing feature during video recordings. This feature will smooth out any shaky camera recording, but I don't think I will record a video like that more than once or twice a year. So that is not a big feature for me, but your story may differ. In summary, the iPhone 11 may be a few years old now, but it still holds up as a great phone in 2023. With its affordable price, solid build quality, impressive cameras, and long battery life, it's a great option for anyone who doesn't need the latest and greatest technology. 
Plus, with Apple's continued support, you can expect to receive updates and security patches for at least a few more years. And if you are looking for a reliable and affordable iPhone, the iPhone 11 is definitely worth considering. Thank you for watching. If you made it to the end of the video, please do hit the like button so this video gets pushed to more viewers like you. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button as I do release weekly tech videos. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next week.